The announcement that Stable Diffusion 3 is coming out soon kind of overshadowed another really important announcement, and that's Stable Cascade. So let's talk about why it's such a big deal and how you can actually install it and use it on your own PC today. Stable Cascade is brought to you by the same people that brought you Stable Diffusion, folks over at Stability AI. And what makes this interesting is it's still a text to image model, but it's built upon something called the Wurstin architecture. The reason you should care about that is because Stable Cascade is exceptionally easy to train and fine tune on consumer hardware, thanks to a three stage approach. So let's talk about that a little bit. You can see some examples here. We're gonna dive in, we're gonna run our own examples through Stable Cascade, but one of the big things is the adherence to the prompt. So how well it actually follows along with the details inside of a prompt. If you want an object over here on the right and an object over here on the left, does it actually listen to you? How well does it do text? So you can see there's coherent text in all of these example images. And then finally, how aesthetically pleasing are the images that it produces? But first, let's talk about the reason it's called Stable Cascade. You can see here that you're broken down into three stages, a stage A, a stage B, and a stage C. There's also groupings in those stages. You've got the decoding layer, which is stage A and B, and then you've got this generator layer, which is stage C. Now, traditionally, when you fine tune or train a stable diffusion model, you have to do so across the entire data set. This is really time consuming. It takes a lot of hardware and compute to do that. That's why it takes several hours sometimes to train just a simple LoRa file. The difference here with Stable Cascade is that that training and fine tuning is done just at stage C. There are also some under the hood changes that make this a much more powerful model that'll run on lower end hardware. And for that, we can jump over here. You can see the model is built upon the worst in architecture and its main difference to other models like Stable Diffusion is that it's working at a much smaller latent space. Now, what the heck does that even mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. In artificial intelligence, latent space refers to a mathematical space which maps what a neural network has learned from training images. Once it's been trained, it understands all images of trees exist in a specific area, all images of birds and another. So it's really just a compression of that space. Now, going back to over here, why is that important? The smaller the latent space, the faster you can run inference and the cheaper the training becomes. So how small is the actual latent space for Stable Cascade? Well, it uses a compression factor of eight in Stable Diffusion. So 1024 by 1024 image is represented and encoded at 128 by 128. With Stable Cascade, on the other hand, it achieves a compression factor of 42, meaning it's possible to encode a 1024 image down to 24 by 24. If you watched my video on how Stable Diffusion works, you'll know that that compressed image space, that latent space, is where it actually does the image steering with the text. So when you provide a text prompt, the image is steered based on that latent space. So by having it compressed so much down to that 24 by 24, you can get a 16 times cost reduction over Stable Diffusion 1.5. What this all means for you and I is that we can train these models on much lower end hardware. We can train them much faster on the same GPUs. So for Stability AI, and their massive GPU clusters, they might be able to train a brand new Stable Cascade model in a few hours or a few days instead of weeks or months. This new architecture still supports all the things we know and love. LoRa models for training and fine tuning based on styles and aesthetics, control net, IP adapter, LCM, all of these things are still possible with this new model. And from a visual evaluation point of view, this is how the images actually look. They actually did some really interesting things here. They compared Stable Cascade at 30 inference steps. This is the number of times an image is iterated over within Stable Diffusion. And it's compared against Playground V2 at 50 inference steps, Stable Diffusion XL at 50 inference steps, and SDXL Turbo at one inference step. And the results across the top here are prompt alignment. So it's actually Stable Cascade, you can see here on the right much better at prompt adherence. So actually putting images and details in images at the right place as you specified it in your prompt. The other piece is the aesthetic quality. This is down below. And you can see the aesthetic quality against all of these is much higher, except for Playground V2, which it's pretty much on par with. Why does this matter? Why does prompt alignment and aesthetic quality matter? Well, it's how good the images look, but also 
how precise they are. This is just a fun tool, a fun gimmick, if you aren't able to precisely make an image exactly how you want it. You've gotta be able to say, hey, I want a plant over here, I want a light over here, I want my hands up in the air. It's gotta do what you ask it to. And so we're slowly getting there. We've seen better text generation from recent models, and we're gonna see even more prompt adherence. I think Dolly 3 is probably the reigning champ, and it makes sense. OpenAI and ChatGPT are really good at understanding language, and so they've baked that into their model. Stability AI in the open source world is really getting into that as well. The other really cool thing to mention here is this runs on various spec hardware, and I think you're gonna see more of that from Stability AI going forward. So stage C comes with a 1 billion and 3.6 billion parameter version, so two different sizes, and they obviously highly recommend the larger one because it, the most work went into fine tuning that. There are two versions for stage B as well that amount to 700 million and one and a half billion parameters. And lastly, stage A contains 20 million parameters and it's fixed due to its really small size. So you can run this on low VRAM or high VRAM systems and you can use kind of pick and choose the models and the different settings that you wanna use in order to do so. And I think that's really cool because it sort of democratizes the open source nature of the world going forward. And that's something that's awesome. Installing this is relatively straightforward, but it's not quite as easy as just downloading the model and dropping it into Focus or Automatic 11.11. If you've already got one of those installed and you followed one of my tutorials, you need to install Gradio, Accelerate, and then you need to install the actual diffusion models from Worshton V3. Once you've done that, you can just go here and you can fire up the Gradio app. This needs a special Gradio app that's baked in with all the details you need to, in order to run Stable Cascade. It's gonna get easier going forward, but for now, that's what you have to do. And if that all feels a little too daunting, you can always sign up or head over to my Patreon page. Over at Patreon, I have a how-to on installing Stable Cascade with an auto installer. It's a one-click installer, you press a button, and this batch file is gonna download and install Python, get every single thing that you need. It's even gonna install Gradio. Then there's a launcher, another one-click button. You press it and you can launch the app. Really super easy and simple. So don't worry, I've got your back. That link's down below. All you have to do to run that installer is drop it into a directory, in this case, Stable Cascade. Double click on it, it's gonna launch a window and you can see it's taking care of everything for us. It's downloading everything that we need running all the packages, all you have to do is sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea, have some fun. When that's done, you're gonna have this brand new Stable Cascade folder. When you go into that, simply drop in my Stable Cascade launcher, click on that, and that's gonna launch the terminal window that you need in order to run this new custom version of Gradio. That's gonna fire up, and then you're gonna have a web browser window pop up that's gonna have Stable Cascade up and running in just a few seconds. And I'll give you a tip for Gradio when it starts up. You can do question mark, underscore, underscore, theme equals dark. It's gonna take it into dark mode, a little bit easier on the eyes. Now you can see down at the bottom, food photography of a delicious steak, futuristic soldier. These are example prompts that I've added to this system so you can get started with just clicking on one and hitting the run button. Just like every other version of Stable Diffusion you've had, you're gonna get this sort of static, funny looking image and it should run fairly quickly, especially if you have decent high-end hardware. Now, one thing to note, I am using up about 20 gigabytes of VRAM with this early preview release of Stable Cascade, so hopefully you've got a little bit of beefy system. But you can see the results come back in just a few seconds, and it's really high quality, it's really aesthetically pleasing. What we're gonna do is some side-by-side -side comparisons between Stable Diffusion XL and Stable Cascade, so we can see apples to apples how they stack up. On the right hand side, you can see I'm using pixeldojo.ai. This is my own personal project. You can go over and you can join, you can create an account, and you can start using different diffusion models. I've got Stable Diffusion XL, Juggernaut, Anime XL, even Stable Diffusion XL Lightning. You can also do some really cool things with AI image upscaling, which I just released out of beta a couple days ago. And as you can see, it takes your original images here on the left from Stable Diffusion or any other source, and it adds a whole bunch of new details to it, making them photorealistic. And of course, there are a bunch of open source language models you can play around with, including Mistral, Mixtral, Llama 270B, and even Google Gemma, the brand new one that was just dropped a few days ago. But today, again, we're gonna focus on just doing a side-by-side -side comparison of images. And I've got a few examples down here that I include, and when you click on them, let's take this dragon, for example, 
you can see that it pre-fills the prompt and the negative prompt. So we're gonna go ahead and just copy these over to Gradio and use the exact same settings. We're not gonna change anything else. Now, if you're running Stable Cascade on your own hardware and Stable Diffusion XL, Stable Cascade should come back faster. In this case, it's not going to be faster because, well, Pixel Dojo is using NVIDIA A100 GPUs versus my 3090 here on my local PC. And when we're done, let's take a side-by-side -side look at the results. And I would say in this case, these two came out pretty similar. You can see the details of the gems in both of them, both dragons. I don't like the details of the eyes in either of these. I think they could be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, but very similar result from the two. So we're really looking for two things here, how well it adheres to the prompt, so every single detail that's presented in the prompt, and then just objectively, how does it look? How aesthetically pleasing is one image over the other? So if there's the next one, we're gonna say a beautiful lady, freckles, big smile, ruby eyes, short hair, dark makeup, hyper detailed photography, soft light. Let's generate for both. Okay, so interestingly, neither system really adheres to the prompt completely. It is a shoulder up picture. It's a beautiful woman with freckles. It did give them both red hair, although the one on the left, I would say is ruby hair more than red. Neither of them have ruby colored eyes. They both look like they're kind of greenish, grayish colored eyes. And so it seems to apply that ruby color to the hair rather than the eyes. I will say from an aesthetic point of view, the one from Stable Cascade does look generally better and more realistic. Next up, let's test that prompt adherence a little bit more. Moody aesthetic, beautiful, cozy, cramped bedroom with floor to ceiling glass windows overlooking a cyberpunk city at night, torrential rain downpour. Let's see what it comes up for both of those. So both images are kind of that dark gloomy look that it called for. You've got floor to ceiling windows. It looks like it's overlooking the nighttime of a cyberpunk city. There's that torrential downpour. Now it looks a little bit weird over here on the right hand side. Is that water in the middle of the floor? Looks like it might be. There's also some weird abnormalities going on with some of the details in the room, but it does look like it's more cramped on the right hand side perhaps. And the left looks more aesthetically pleasing. It looks like it's more modern and open, sort of a very clean look. I'll say both did a good job of following the prompt. I would say on the left, you get a bit of more aesthetically pleasing image out of it. This next one, medium shot, adorable creature with big reflective eyes, moody lighting, full body portrait, real picture. And here we go, both of these guys are pretty freaking adorable. Now I will say the one on the left looks much higher quality, the details, the one on the right, sort of jagged, rough edges, it's kind of blurry in the middle, a little bit off. The one on the left, Super high quality, very aesthetically pleasing. So I think again, the aesthetic score, this is why Stable Cascade is scoring higher on the aesthetics. You can see it in the results. All right, for this one, sunlight filters through a dense rainforest canopy, illuminating a tiny robot, rusty and weathered, its eyes still glow. This one's slightly more of a toss up. You can see both of them look really high quality. I like the depth of field, the lighting, everything else looks great in both images. I will say the one thing, this guy on the right looks a little bit more haphazardly put together. Maybe that's what you're going for, maybe it isn't. But the one on the left is a little bit more clean and polished in the way that all the shapes sort of align together with all the different body parts. But I'd say both quality images out of these two models. For this next one, we're gonna actually make this a series of images using the same prompt, but building on top of it. So I'm gonna say a group of cats taking a selfie. Then we're gonna see when this starts to kind of fall apart. All right, Stable Diffusion XL, I don't know what you're doing. You're already kind of letting me down on this one. You've got this camera kind of floating in the air. I guess that's the selfie camera. Otherwise, both of them are really similar results. You've got a group of cats, see five cats in both images. They're all kind of looking at the camera, getting ready, kind of clumped together for a selfie. That's an overall good result if it weren't for this weird camera in the middle. So now we're gonna add on to that. We're gonna say a group of cats taking a selfie, holding up a sign that says no dogs. This is gonna test not only the aesthetics of the image, but also how well it adheres to the prompts. So they gotta be holding the sign up. And then does it actually have coherent text? Okay, super interesting. I don't know why it went straight to kind of a cartoon aesthetic over there on the right hand side. It says no dose, dogs. <laughs> Can't really get the text coherent. On the left, man, look at that text. That looks like it's a font face that was just typed on here. That looks like something you do straight out of Photoshop. He's also actually holding the sign with these weird cat hands, these like furry hands at the bottom. 
but I gotta say it sort of nailed it. We can push it a little further. Now we're gonna add the cats are inside an ultra modern cafe with a group of people standing behind them. On the right, again, it went with that kind of cartoonish feel. No do's, no, it's still not getting the text right. It's got a bunch of arms randomly up in the air with people supposedly with a camera maybe or something. I don't know, really odd one. Sort of nailed it on the left though. You've got the cats in the foreground taking the selfie. Now you've got a person holding a sign in the back that says no dogs, still coherent text. And it looks like they're inside of some sort of modern building. I guess we gotta keep pushing this further until we break Stable Cascade. On top of all that, we're gonna add the cat on the left is drinking a cup of coffee. All right, and I think that's where we've reached the limit of these capabilities. You can still see no dogs on the sign on the left, although at the top it's now losing its coherence. No dogs are inside, but it's sort of broken English. The people, it looks like this guy has a fist going into his face over here on the left. This guy on the right looks like he might be growing cat ears and he has like 15 fingers on his hand. Something's going on here. And on the right, it does actually have a cup of coffee sitting in front of the cat on the left. So it did get that. They're inside of a cafe, but there's no people. The cats are sort of dressed as people and the text is still kind of wonky. I think we push Stable Cascade about as far as you can, but you can see overall, it has a very nice adherence to the prompt. And that's exactly what we need going forward. It also produces some really high quality images. And I think that this underlying Stable Cascade is what Stable Diffusion 3 is actually being trained upon. I think what they're doing is they're fine tuning the model and they're making it even better by adding even more steerability to the text layer, that sort of part C of the pipeline, if you will. That remains to be seen. I'm looking forward to Stable Diffusion 3 coming out and you know I'm gonna do a video as soon as it drops. Don't forget to hit those links in the description below if you wanna check this out on Pixel Dojo AI or you wanna install with the one-click installer. Otherwise, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. As always, I'm Brian Lovett and remember, all your tech are belong to us. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All your tech AI, earning the renown.